Yeah, Michael, yeah, Michael. You want me to talk about Michael? Yeah, just a good one. And when you see Michael, tell him I'm coming for him. Tell me how you're feeling right now. Oh great man, I'm just a good energy, good spirits. This is this is my, my peaceful place, man. It's my happy place. And when I'm in my happy places, it gets dangerous. So for other people. You guys are safe, don't worry. <laughs> What's fight we've been like for you? Because obviously you fought for the title before, but this is your home country. This is when we and obviously a lot going on for you this week. You're going burger, clothing line, yeah, yeah, yeah. this week has been like yeah, to be fair, I've been hustling. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on in the background as people are starting to see so bit by bit. Um, and it just feels good that, you know, the kind of the appreciation from a lot of people and a lot of support that I'm getting is just great. But that's just secondary to what is most important. You know, if I, if I don't win and win in the way I've been winning, that stuff doesn't happen. So this is the most important bit. Overall, what's your training camp been like? Obviously, 25 minutes, championship fight. How is it different compared to your other ones? It's been hell. <laughs> it's been horrible. But you gotta, you got to enjoy this pain in this game, otherwise you're not going to achieve much. Seriously, it's a, it's a tough game. Uh, we put our body through a lot just to come out here and do what I, you know, I do best. But, you know, we have to do that. It's not, as much as, as stylish as I can look and as, you know, as easy as, as I can make it look, it's not, it doesn't come easy. You have to work for it. And I know you come out to entertain. He's going to come and try to wrestle you, which might not be the most fan favorite style. You're performing in front of your home country. So how do you block that out? Oh, knock him out. Knock him out. The tail of the tape for this contract weight match between, for one final time, Paul Daly and Wendell Giacomo. It's all about the record at this being his 64th and final fight against 9 and 2. Wendell Giacomo, this is going to be special as Paul Daly's going away. Will this crowd get what it wants? At home, it's always a big event for Michael, right? So there hasn't been any bigger than this. You know, he's headlined London a lot of times, and you know he's had big fights, but nothing bigger than this. So it's been nothing but positive. Everything's been amazing. We're just excited to do that before. And obviously, an opponent change. When I talk to MVPs, like I don't really deal with that stuff. But from the managerial side, what was that process like? Of a trying to keep him on the card, and B trying to make it for a title. We, we always knew, you know, that that was important to us, that if we're staying in this fight, it has to be for a title, right? That, that if not, we may as well wait and see what happens in the division, right? So, so I think you deserve the title, um, and, and I think that Bellator did the right thing, right? And between me and, and uh, his coaches at London Shoe Fighters, we went through a few options, found what option made the most sense, and we're really happy with how it shook out. I'm um, Alexis Mitrovic, uh, I'm the head coach of Salon Chief Fighters and I coach Michael Van Page. Alexis, I just want to talk about this week, obviously change an opponent, uh, also a very good uh, grappler, different styles, but how much of MVP's training camp changed once the opponent changed? I think when you're dealing with someone like Amsoft, you've got to look at uh, a lot of body looking and switching from singles to, to bodies, whereas with someone like Storley, you've got to look at that classic American sort of uh, shooting style, singles and doubles, fighting doubles, so it's changed a little bit, but um, not massively. Some of the wrist controls and the tires and stuff were changed. Amosov's a slightly different style fighter. He, he changed things differently. But, but um, Storley's still super, super talented and likes to wrist grab on, on the floor and switches from singles to doubles. So it's kind of similar, but I think Amosov's a little bit more of a body. Is this kind of what this training camp looked like, drilling a lot of like wrestling stuff? Yeah, I think if I'm honest with you, um, most of Michael's camps are him on his back. Uh, he's got a, you know, that's what people are going to want to do with him. He's had a lot of experience uh, kickboxing and boxing. We train very we, we coach uh, world champion boxers in Algeria. So uh, boxing is not really 
you know, whenever we had the spas, we don't really mind that sort of fight. But the, uh, the grapplers and stuff, we flew into NCAA wrestling champions. We've got loads of uh, Eastern Europeans. All of our coaches, I went to the Olympics for wrestling, so did the other coaches. We're all pretty good wrestlers. So we're, we're decent enough, but it's just getting that right timing for your shots um, during live combat. And story's really good, so it should be a super interesting match. <laughs> Wrestling performance 
from Logan Story, real good clash of styles. I want to get your view on, on MVP. Uh, he's had a long road mm -hmm. back from the Douglas Lima fight to get this opportunity for the title. Yeah. Just fell short tonight. Yep. What's the road ahead for him in Bellator? Yeah, you know what? I think that, uh, listen, he knew, he knew he was fighting a world-class wrestler. And then honestly, it's like, I think Logan has some improvement to do myself too, because you can't just lay on somebody and think you're gonna win and score points because that's not MMA, that's wrestling. So to me, it's like, if you're gonna if you're gonna wrestle, I think you have to continue the wrestling and you have to continue to either try to submit or ground and pound or strike. I mean, you know, there's, there, there's a difference between, you know, what you see on the wrestling mat and what you see in the cage. I mean, honestly, I thought, you know, that uh, MVP won that fight, so. And, and the reason why I say that, and, and, and to me, it's like, I was talking to my guys back home, and they go, look, it's close, but we think MVP won. And I said, why do you say that? And they said, because half the round, he was striking. The other half, you can't just lay on somebody. You're not doing any damage. You're not getting closer to a submission. You're not creating any threat. You're just laying on somebody. And to me, that's, that's not even that. Interestingly, you talked to Scott Coker. He actually scored the fight for your opponent, MVP. What's your immediate reaction to that? Probably the first time you've heard that. So, uh, what do you say to those who suggest that MVP might have done enough to win? Um, what, uh, what rounds besides round four? You know, I, I get it. It was, uh, like I said, props to him. He's fast and explosive. But I won all those positions, and I took the fight where I wanted it. You know, and so if he would have wanted to keep it standing, then why didn't he? And so. I won round one, two, three, and five. So, I mean, if you think that, um, besides round four, clearly it was him, you know? And one, one, five, and two is clearly me. So, uh, I don't know, I guess, I guess people wanna uh, can score, you know, that's why judging is the way it is in our sport. So, good for him, I guess. Uh, frustrating feeling mixed with excitement. The frustration is I lost. Um, and I lost in that manner where somebody, it felt like somebody really wasn't trying to win a fight, but trying to survive a fight. But the excitement is, it made me, it, it kind of makes me feel that I am exceptionally dangerous. It kind of just, it, I, like I knew I was, but when you see people fighting them the way they fight, you know, I had the likes of Paul Daly, uh, an exceptional knockout art, artist, tried to do exactly the same thing and became a Logan Storley. The Logan Storley was a bit more, you know, I kind of expected that kind of game plan. But then when I'm turning people like that, it's just, it, it really makes me feel like, seriously, once I get this side locked down and people cannot hold me down and they're forced into my arena, I'm going to be the most dangerous man on the planet in this sport. So I'm excited to get, get going.